Good morning. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining class this morning. Uh, John Paul, can you please lead us in prayer? Father, thank you for this time, Lord. We submit us into your mighty presence. So, God, we pray as we continue to learn from your word that you would open our eyes of understanding and speak to us, Lord. Help us to know your word more. Help us to know you more. Lord, we submit us a uh, Selena, your mighty hands of God, we pray that we'll be able to deliver what you have kept in store to us, oh God. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John Paul. How are all of you doing this morning? The last day of this week, I mean, I mean, when, you know, we work Mondays to Fridays, but I'm sure since all of us, I think, are involved in uh, ministry, church ministry, Saturday and Sunday are pretty busy. But uh, how are all of you doing? It will cold and cough, but I think it's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the cold and cough is because of the heat or? Uh... Uh, I think it's because of heat and our neighbor kids also had. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, All of us were down, but it's getting better. Thank you. Oh, even Shekaina? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she has a little cough. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll keep you all in prayer then. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Lobega. Doing very well. What about Zilatoli? Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so we'll begin uh, class this morning. We are looking at uh, uh, chapter. I think chapter 10, it shows six here for me, but I think it's chapter 10. We're doing the doctrine of angels. Uh, it's our second last lesson. Yes, it's uh, chapter 10. When you think about angels, uh, what comes to your mind? What is your understanding of angels? Angels are spirit beings created by God. Okay, thank you, John. Angels are spirit beings uh, created by God. Okay. What else uh, do you have you gathered from scripture about angels in your reading? Okay, they are ministering spirits. They minister. Anything else? God's messengers, okay. Thank you, Zelatoli. They do what God tells them to do. Who did they? Who do they minister to? To God. To God, okay. Do they minister to us as well? Yes, okay, thank you. Zelatoli Lubega says there are both good and uh, uh, bad angels. Okay, so the bad ones uh, are uh, doing the uh, ministering to Satan, to devil, demons, they are called. Okay, good. Anything else about your understanding about angels? Yes, thank you, Anita. Angels praise and worship God. They never take a break, 24-7, all the time. They're worshipping God, okay? Good, so we'll uh, look at uh, Lesson 10, the Doctrine of Angels. If you notice, it's just very uh, brief points there, but I will just elaborate. So if you would like to take down notes, you're welcome to do so. Uh, so angels are created uh, spiritual beings uh, with moral judgment and high intel, uh, intelligence. Um, we, uh, you know, they are not just uh, beings who are there. Uh, only God uh, is not created, uh, not a created being, 
but other than God uh, or the uh, you know the God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they are not created beings. Uh, they always were. They uh, they always existed. They always they will always be. Okay, but we see that uh, angels are uh, created beings. God created them. Uh, when do you think? Uh, how? Uh, okay, first let's look at scripture where we see that angels are created being. Uh, if one of you could please read Psalm 148 verses 2 to 5, please. 148, 2 to 5. Psalms chapter 148 verses 2 to 5. Can one of you please read that? Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all your stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. Thank you. So here we see that, uh, you know, they got commanded and they were created. So angels have not always existed. Uh, they are part of the universe that God uh, created them. Uh, so when do you think that God would have created the angels? Because it doesn't mention in creation, uh, the creation narrative, right? So any idea when God created uh, the angels? Any thoughts on that? Before the creation of the earth? Yes. Thank you, Lubega. So if you look at Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 1, it says, uh, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished, and on the seventh day God ended his work, and He as uh, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. So we see that before the seventh day God created uh, the heavens and the earth, and all the hosts of them were finished before the seventh day. But if you look at Genesis chapter 1, uh, I just read from Genesis chapter 2. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, uh, we see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And immediately it goes on to say that the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Uh, and God said, okay, so before he created the earth, it's most probably that he created uh, you know, uh, the angelic beings, because it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the uh, earth. Okay, that is what uh, uh, commentary writers say, theologians say. Okay, but um, we know that God, uh, uh, angels well, did not exist. They did not always exist. They were created. They were part of the universe that God uh, created. Angels are also capable of moral judgment, uh, how can we say that they are capable of moral judgment? Yeah, thank you, Lubega. Lubega says that, uh, you know, the angels were created uh, before the earth was created. In fact, even the devil, devil's rebellion had uh, already occurred. Yes. True. Uh, so we see that angels are capable of uh, moral judgment. What uh, do we do? You understand by this? Angels are capable of moral judgment. What's the meaning of moral judgment? Okay, they have a will. Uh, do we all have a moral judgment? Yes, we uh, are able to choose. Uh, uh, we know what is right and we know what is wrong. We're able to choose right from wrong. Uh, sometimes we're able to, you know, sometimes we even choose what is wrong. But uh, we know, uh, you know, we are able to make a moral judgment. We're not able to know what is right. We are able to know what is wrong. And hence, we know that angels are also capable of moral judgment because when um, when Lucifer, uh, you know, he was filled with pride and he thought he could be worshipped also as God because he was uh, powerful enough. 
um, and he rallied a few of uh, the angels in heaven. We see that uh, some of them did make, uh, you know, uh, all of them, in fact, would have made a choice whether to follow and worship Satan or to worship God. And those uh, who, um, you know, gave in to Satan and, um, and worshipped him, uh, we see that uh, they sinned and fell from their uh, position. So uh, we know that angels exercise moral uh, judgment because we see the fact in scripture that some of them sinned and fell from their position. Uh, we read this in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4, where it says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but send them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for uh, judgment. And Jude has only one chapter. So in verse 6, it says, And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. So we see that, you know, uh, just as we have been given uh, the free moral uh, will to choose. Uh, we also see that uh, angels have also been given the free moral will to choose and hence they exercise their moral uh, judgment. Okay, and uh, so they are capable of moral judgment. The third thing is that they have high uh, intelligence uh, and we see this throughout scripture even as they speak to people. Uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 5, uh, you know, uh, uh, the resurrection the two, at the tomb of Jesus, when the women went early in the morning, the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, uh, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Uh, another uh, narrative that we can see in scripture is in Acts chapter 12, verses uh, 6 to 11. Uh, you know, this is about Peter, the night that he was uh, uh, before, the night before he was going to be, uh, you know, brought uh, to trial before Herod. He was sleeping between two soldiers bound with chains. Um, and there was also uh, a guard who was standing at the entrance. Suddenly, uh, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light, bright light shone in uh, his cell. And the, uh, the angel struck Peter on the side, woke him up and said, quick, get up. And uh, his, uh, you know, Peter's chain just fell off his wrist. And the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And uh, Peter did so. And he tells him to wrap uh, his cloak around him and to follow him. Uh, and uh, Peter, you know, followed him out of prison, but he had no idea uh, that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. And, uh, you know, they passed through the first uh, and the second guards and they came to the iron gate, uh, which was leading to the city. And uh, the iron gate opened by itself and they went through it. And, uh, you know, when Peter walked through the street, suddenly the angel left him and then he realized uh, and he knew without any doubt that the Lord had sent this angel who had rescued him from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were uh, hoping would happen to him. So we see that, uh, you know, they have um, uh, high intelligence. Um, we also know that angels uh, sing and praise God. Uh, we see that in scripture, Revelation chapter 5. Uh, verse 11. Would one of you like to read Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, please? Revelation chapter 5 and verses 11. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousands upon ten thousand, they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. Okay, verse 12 as well. Verses 12. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who, can, who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and praise. Thank you, Siddhikeno. So here we see that, uh, you know, uh, the angels numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousand upon ten thousands, 
um, you know, they circled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And, uh, you know, they kept praising uh, God. So they keep on praising God all the time. Uh, and hence we see that angels sing praises uh, to God. Uh, we also know that angels are spirit beings. They do not have a, a body like human body like us. Uh, can we see angels? Can we see angels? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Why sometimes yes and sometimes no, Siddhikeno? Ma'am, because like in Old Testament also we see like there was some times like people were able to see the angels. Like when, <clears throat> what was the incident? Like when we see there was an incident with Balaam. He was there. His donkey was able to see the angel, but he himself he was not able to see the angel. And we and we see in the in incident of Samson, his wife was able, like Samson's mother was able to see the angel, but but there was his father. There was a time he was not able to see the angel. Another visitation, his father was able to see the angel, ma'am. Thank you, Siddhikeno. Right? Yes, Balaam was not able to see the angel, but his donkey was able to see. But when God opened his eyes. Uh, he was uh, able to see the angel with a drawn sword. Okay. Uh, yes, Lubega says if it, if God wills. So if it's uh, God's will, when he opens uh, uh, our eyes to be able to see the angel, then we can uh, see the angel. So uh, they cannot be seen unless God gives us the ability to um, uh, see them. Uh, we have uh, one uh, example in Second Kings uh, chapter 6. Um, you know, the, uh, the king of Syria was going to attack um, uh, Israel and we see that um, uh, the king of Syria was quite amazed because whatever he's discussing uh, with his officers in his palace is known to the king. So uh, he's so wondering uh, and, and asking his officers who is spying and uh, going and telling, uh, sending messages to the king of Israel. And, uh, uh, you know, one of them says uh, that none of them, but it's the prophet uh, in Israel who, uh, you know, who God reveals all of the things that the king speaks. And hence the king of Israel knows their plans ahead of what they're going to do. And so the king of Syria sends an army and they surround the city where Elisha is. And in the morning when Elisha's servant uh, wakes up, sees this big army of uh, soldiers, he's totally shaken and frightened. And he tells Elisha this. And when Elisha comes out, um, you know, he's uh, <clears throat> uh, able to see the Syrian army, but also he's able to see uh, uh, the heavenly uh, host of heavenly army on the mountains uh, surrounding uh, them and surrounding the Syrian army. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Elisha tells the servant not to worry, and uh, uh, but his servant is not able to understand because he says, you know, uh, Greater are those who are with us than uh, this army and the uh, servant is not able to uh, understand what his master is saying. And then Elisha prays and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened um, the servant's eyes and he was uh, the eyes of the young man. And he, he saw and behold on the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around uh, Elisha. Uh, so... That is one incident. And uh, another incident, like Siddhi Kenu says, is uh, in uh, Numbers chapter 22 uh, about uh, Balaam. Uh, you know, uh, three times, uh, you know, when he was uh, traveling on his donkey to go and help uh, Balak, uh, the king of Moab, uh, um, uh, to bring about curses on uh, uh, the uh, the people of Israel and God is angry with him because God tells him go but only go when they come and call you but before they come and call him he rises up in the morning and he goes along with them and so we see that an angel uh, God sends an angel with a drawn sword who stands in the way uh, uh, three times uh, once the, the donkey goes away in the wrong direction into the field uh, the second time in a vineyard, uh, the donkey uh, is so scared and frightened that he, uh, you know, 
hits himself against the wall, wall and crushes uh, Elisha's feet. Um, and then um, in an, uh, the third time, the angel, you know, with a drawn sword stands in a narrow path, which the donkey cannot go right or left. And he just, you know, uh, sits down. And all three times, uh, 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 Balaam is very angry. He strikes his donkey and God opens the mouth of the donkey and he speaks. Um, and then we see that uh, the Lord opens Balaam's eyes and he sees the angel of the Lord standing in the road uh, with his uh, drawn sword and he bows down on his face, um, uh, falls down on his face uh, and uh, just falls prostrate before the uh, angel. So we see that, um, you know, all of these times, uh, uh, you know, God opens the eyes of the people and they are able to see the um, angels. Okay, or the uh, angelic host. So we see that angels are spirit beings. Uh, we read this also in um, Hebrews chapter 1, was <clears throat> sorry, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, where it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? So they are uh, um, spirit beings and they are uh, uh, spirit beings who minister both before God and uh, uh, to human beings, okay? And we cannot see them unless God gives us a special ability uh, to see them like uh, we saw. Sorry. Uh, like we saw in these various uh, narratives, okay? Uh, they also um, guard and protect us. We read this in Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. Uh, Psalm 91, verse 11. Uh, and uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, which I just said that they are ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation. Uh, we know Psalm 91 that, uh, you know, God sends his angels to guard and protect us so that our feet or foot will not even dash against a stone. Uh, we also read that they guard and protect us in Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. Uh, would one of you like to read uh, Psalm chapter 34, verse 7, please? Psalm chapter 34, verse 7. Psalms chapter 34 and verses 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Thank you. So the angel of the Lord encamps those uh, who fear him and he delivers them, delivers them from every uh, stronghold, from every demonic affliction, from every work of the um, enemy. Uh, we also read this in Psalm 91 verse 11. We also saw that in Hebrews chapter 1 verse uh, 14. Now the angels also uh, join us in worship. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. Can one of you please read Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22? And there also we see that they are invisible. Hebrews 12 22. Hebrews 12 and verses 22. But you have but you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Thank you. So we see that uh, the angelic hosts, the angels also join with us even as we worship. God. Okay. Uh, from however, from time to time, also we see that angels uh, take on bodily form and appear to various people in Scripture. I just told you about uh, Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse five, where the angel appears to the woman at the tomb. Uh, we also read about this in Hebrews chapter thirteen, uh, verse two, where it says, "Do not forget to entertain strangers." For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. That is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. Uh, you know, so uh, when we entertain strangers, sometimes, you know, unknowingly, we even entertain uh, angels. Uh, uh, one incident is Abraham, 
you know, uh, just before the angels were going to Sodom and Gomorrah uh, to destroy it, uh, the angels come and meet uh, Abraham and then they go off to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, but they looked as uh, men, okay, uh, so they take on a, a bodily uh, form. So sometimes uh, angels do take on uh, a bodily form and they do appear uh, to people. Okay, to various people, and we see this also in scripture. Now, angels are many in number, they're innumerable. Uh, we just read that in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, 22. Siddu Kenu just read that, uh, you know, you've come to Mount Zion, the city of God, the city of the living God. Uh, you've come to thousands upon ten thousands of angels in joyful uh, assembly. We also read this in uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, just a little bit earlier. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands, 10,000 times uh, 10,000. So there are innumerable um, angels, okay? And uh, we know that uh, the angels, apart from just praising and worshiping God, um, they also fight uh, the battle against uh, uh, the demonic forces. We read that in scripture as well. Uh, they also guard and protect us. Uh, we, we looked at that uh, as well. Okay, Psalm 91 verse 11 says, For he will command his angels concerning you uh, to guard you in all your ways. So they even guard, protect us, uh, minister to us. You know, there are times when we could have had an accident, we could have fallen, uh, we could have, uh, you know, many things could have happened, but, you know, God has sent his angels who have guarded and uh, protected us. The times when we were sick, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, and uh, no one to help us. It was the angelic host who were ministering to us uh, when we were down, uh, feeling depressed, suicidal. Uh, also, of course, the Spirit of God there ministering to us, but also the angelic beings uh, who uh, minister to us as well. Okay. Uh, we also know that the angels are mighty and have great power. Uh, two references where we can read this is in Psalm 103, verse 20. So can one of you please read Psalm 103, verse 20? And uh, someone else can read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Psalms 103, verse 20 and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his work, heeding the voice of his word. Thank you. Second uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a revealing accusation against them before the Lord. Thank you, Zelatoli. So here we see in Psalm 103, verse 20, says, Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones. Okay, so they are mighty, powerful. Uh, and Second Peter chapter 2, verse 11, it says that uh, yet even angels, though they are stronger and more powerful, okay, uh, so they are more stronger and more powerful than us human beings, um, at least for the time uh, 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 that we have our earthly existence, human beings are made lower than the angels. We read this in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, that we are created lower than the um, angels and so angels are mighty and powerful, but they are not omni uh, potent. That they are not all powerful. They are not pow more powerful than God, uh, because they are created beings. But yes, they are more stronger and more powerful uh, than us, and hence they, uh, um, you know, they fight on behalf of us against the demonic forces, the demonic realm, uh, the forces in the heavenly realms. Okay. Uh, angels are also um, 
I mean, I just like I said, angels are created beings, therefore they are not omnipresent as well. They cannot uh, be there at all times, present everywhere at all times and in all places uh, because they are created beings. They're also not omnipotent, okay? Now, um, this is not mentioned in your notes as well, but I'm just going to uh, state this. Um, now, uh, there are also other heavenly beings which are mentioned in scripture along with angels. Uh, do you know which are the other heavenly beings that are mentioned in scripture along with angels? Any idea? No idea. Okay, we have the cherubim. Uh, if you remember the, you know, the the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the two golden figures of the cherubim, uh, and uh, we know that God comes there and He says, "I will come and meet with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims that are upon the Ark of Testimony or the uh, the Ark of the Covenant." So we have the cherubim, we have the seraphim, and we have the living. Uh, creatures. Now, who are the cherubim? Uh, we read about them in Psalm 18, verse 10, and Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, uh, Exodus chapter 25, verse 22 as well. The cherubim were given the task of guarding the entrance to the Garden of Eden. Uh, we read this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Uh, we also see that, uh, uh, you know, God himself is frequently said uh, to be enthroned on the cherubim uh, or to travel with the cherubim as his chariot. Uh, we read this in Psalm 18, verse 10, and Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 1 to uh, 22. Uh, and also over the Ark of the Covenant uh, in the Old Testament, we read that, uh, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, the box that was there on top of that on the lid, you know, the covering, the, uh, the lid, there were two golden figures of the cherubim. Uh, with their wings stretched out above the ark. And uh, it was there that God promised he would come and dwell among his people. Uh, we read this in Exodus chapter uh, 25, verse 22, where it says, that I will meet with you and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are upon the ark of the covenant or testimony, I will speak with you of all that I, ha I will give you in commandment for the people of uh, Israel. So we see that, uh, you know, here God promises to come and uh, dwell among his people, meet them uh, just in between uh, the, the two golden figures of the cherubim whose wings were stretched out above the ark. So that is the cherubim. We also have the seraphim, another group of heavenly beings, the seraphim. Uh, are mentioned only in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 2 to 7. Uh, we see that they are continually worshipping the Lord and they call to one another. We read this in Psalm, uh, sorry, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And uh, we have other heavenly beings uh, other than the cherubim, the seraphim and the angels. We have the living creatures. Now, uh, these living creatures are mentioned both in Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, verses 5 to 14, and Revelation chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Uh, and we see that uh, in both of these uh, scripture passages, uh, it tells us of another kind of heavenly being known as the living creatures that are around God's throne. Uh, and their appearance is like an lion an ox a man and an eagle uh, so they are basically the mightiest uh, uh, representatives of various parts of god's entire creation which is uh, the lion which is about the wild beast an ox which is a domesticated animal uh, of course man a human being and an eagle which is a bird um, and we see that uh, it's the, like the mightiest representative of various parts of God's creation. And we see that these living creatures, uh, they continually worship God. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, we read that day and night, they never cease to sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord 
God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. Okay, so these are the he other heavenly beings other than angels uh, that are there in heaven, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the living creatures. Now, how should we uh, relate to angels? Uh, we need to be aware of angels in our lives uh, because they are, uh, uh, you know, they are ministering to us and we need to be open uh, to their ministry um, and what they do to us as well. Uh, uh, we also need to know that, like we read in, uh, I think, Hebrews chapter um uh, 13 verse 2 where it says do not forget to entertain strangers for by so doing some have uh, you know unknowingly entertained angels uh, so we never know we can have an angelic visitation but we also know that angels minister to us so we should be aware of that and also be open to their ministry to us okay but we should be uh, uh, aware of receiving even false doctrines from uh, angels now how can uh, angels give us false doctrines uh, how do we know that it's uh, mentioned to us in scripture in uh, galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and uh, second corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse uh, 14 uh, where scripture warns us against receiving um false doctrines from uh you know uh, uh fallen angels who supposedly act like angels who are sent on a mission or an assignment or bring a message from uh the lord himself uh but uh, you know they are uh, coming from uh satan and they are teaching false doctrines uh we read this in galatians chapter 1 verse 18 where it says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we preached to you, let him be accursed. So Paul is writing to the church at Galatia and, uh, you know, he's talking about this. Um, maybe there was a problem. So it says, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we preach to you, uh, let him be accursed. Now, um, here we can say, we can think that, you know, it says here that um, even if uh, if we or an angel from heaven uh, preaches a gospel that is contrary, so uh, we can think sometimes that, you know, these uh, angels are coming from uh, uh, heaven, uh, so they should be coming from God himself. So how can they speak something that is contrary? Now we need to understand that in scripture, uh, okay, all this is not in your notes. I'm just giving you, so for your understanding in scripture, we have, uh, uh, you know, heaven mentioned, uh, uh, the word heaven can refer sometimes to the atmospheric heaven. It can also refer to the celestial heaven. It can refer to the dwelling place of God himself. So the atmospheric heaven uh, is, uh, we can read this in Lamentations chapter 4, verse 19, uh, where it says that our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the heaven. So this is basically just referring to the atmosphere surrounding earth, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, which we refer to as the sky where eagles fly. And this is not referring to heaven where, uh, you know, God lives or we, his children, will live uh, there after death. So one is atmospheric heaven. So sometimes where it just mentions heaven, uh, it can just mean uh, the sky or the atmospheric heaven. Uh, they can also be the celestial heaven. Uh, the Bible heaven is also used to describe the celestial realm where the realm of the sun, moon, stars, and planets. Um, and uh, we see this in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, where, the, you know, he says that placing these lights in heaven, okay? When he created the sun, moon, and the stars, he placed them in heaven. So it's just talking about celestial heaven. And then we have about to heaven, which uh, is scripture refers to in some certain places as a dwelling place of God, where uh, God's throne dwells. So in the Old Testament, people use words like the highest heaven. Uh, we read this uh, for God's, uh, where God's throne is, which is referring to God's uh, throne in heaven. They refer it 
as to as high as heaven, we read this in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14. Uh, and in First Kings chapter 8, verse 27, where it talks about heaven of heavens, it's actually basically talk, uh, separating itself uh, or distinguishing itself from the celestial realm or just from the atmospheric realm, the sky, just really talking about the dwelling place of God, heaven. So uh, they write it as heaven of heavens. Um, uh, to describe it, we read this in First Kings chapter 8, verse 27. Paul, on the other hand, uses words like uh, the third heaven, uh, which he was uh, trying to explain that he was, uh, wasn't just taken into the sky, which is the first heaven, but uh, or into the outer space, which is the second heaven, but rather he was taken uh, to heaven himself, where he was shown the secret things, which is why he refers to as the third heaven. So third heaven also in the scripture refers to the place, the dwelling place of God. Uh, the first uh, heaven talks about the atmospheric realm, the sky, uh, and uh, the outer space between uh, the sky and the heaven of heavens, um, or uh, the highest heaven, or the third heaven, is the uh, is the second heaven, and most probably where uh, you know the demonic realm or the demonic forces there in the first and the second heaven. Okay, so now mentioning that, uh, we see here that. Um, you know, uh, it says here that in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, Paul says, even if we are an angel from heaven, so it can be talking about uh, the first heaven or the second heaven, uh, talking about the demonic force uh, uh, should preach a gospel contrary to that which we preach to him, uh, to you, let him be accursed. And also in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14, um, Paul is making this warning because he knows that there is a possibility of deception. So he says, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So uh, Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light and, uh, uh, you know, uh, speak uh, lies uh, which will appear to us uh, as if it's the uh, truth. And we know that he is the father of all lies. Uh, he's the author, the beginner, beginning of uh, everything that is uh, lies and that is against uh, uh, what God has uh, already revealed to us. And we look at uh, an example in the first Kings chapter 13, verse 18, where we see a prophet was sent by God from uh, Judah uh, to go to Bethel to tell uh, the king uh, what to do. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, he does, uh, the, the, the Lord tells him that he should not turn back on his, the way that he came. He should not eat or drink anything in that place. He should just give the message and come back uh, to, uh, I think it is back to Judah. So he came from, uh, went from Judah to Bethel and to, uh, to share the word of the Lord with Jeroboam. Okay. Um, and we see that in that same place in Bethel, there was an old prophet and his sons come and tell him, uh, you know, there is a prophet who came and spoke to the king and now he's on his way back. And uh, we read that uh, uh, this old prophet tells his sons to saddle his donkey and he goes and he meets this, uh, uh, this prophet on his way who was traveling and he invites him to his house. And uh, this prophet who was sent by God says, no, I cannot turn back because God has told me not to turn back on my journey. I have to keep going ahead and I cannot stop and eat or drink anything in this place. And we read in First Kings chapter 13, verse 18, um, uh, this, uh, this old prophet tells uh, uh, this, this man of God, uh, tells him that an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. And then if you look at uh, just immediately after this, uh, the, uh, this text of scripture immediately adds uh, this, uh, this phrase in the same verse, but he lied to him. Okay. But uh, this uh, man of God thinks that because this man is a prophet and he's heard from God, uh, he goes back with him to his house and he eats. Uh, and just before he sits to eat, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the prophet, uh, uh, cried out to this man of God saying that uh, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, you have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, 
uh, but you came back and ate bread and drank water in this place, um, you shall, uh, you know, uh, you shall eat, no longer eat bread or drink water. Your corpse shall come, not come to the tomb of your fathers. And so we see that after he, this man of God eats and drinks and he goes back, uh, I think there's a lion that uh, meets him on the way and he's on the road and he's killed. Uh, and uh, this old prophet goes and brings him back and uh, buries him. So here we see that, you know, uh, though this old man was a prophet, yet he lied to this man of God. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting here. Uh, uh, so these are all instances of false doctrines or guidance uh, that is being conveyed by angels. And it's interesting that uh, these examples clearly show the possibility of satanic uh, deception, uh, tempting us to disobey the clear teachings of scripture uh, or the clear commandments of uh, God, as we see in First Kings chapter 13, verse 9, where God tells this man of God very clearly, do not turn back and, you know, do not eat any food. Now, once God says that, he, we know, uh, so in instances such as this, we need to fall back on the nature of God. We know that God never goes back on his word. Uh, he says what he uh, he means what he says and his word stands for ever. So these warnings should keep us from being fooled even by false teachers uh, like the claims of the Mormons. Uh, for example, uh, they say the Mormons uh, say that, you know, uh, an angel called Moroni uh, spoke to Joseph Smith and revealed to him the basis of the Mormon uh, religion. Uh, and we know that all of their teachings uh, or the revelation is contrary to the teachings of scripture uh, and the doctrines in scripture at many points, uh, you know, uh, especially with, uh, with uh, the doctrine of Trinity, the person and work of Jesus Christ, uh, justification by faith alone and other uh, such doctrines. So as Christians, uh, we should be warned against accepting these claims. Um, because as we learned in the canon of scripture, uh, uh, that, you know, everything that uh, we need to know as revelation, as truth, has already been revealed to us uh, 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 in scripture. There's no more further revelation of doctrines that has to be given by God himself. So any claims of people saying that they are receiving additional revelation of doctrine from angels, uh, you know, should be rejected as false because of what we have learned. But scripture says that everything that we need to know, uh, God has revealed it to us in scripture, in the person work of uh, and work of Jesus Christ, and we need not have any more um, revelation. So that is, uh, you know, the 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 word of God. Uh, the scripture is the complete revelation. So anyone talking anything new, uh, we need to judge it uh, against what is revealed to us in the scripture, and we will know whether, uh, you know, the their claims are right or wrong. But there is anyone claiming that they are receiving additional revelation uh, from angels. Uh, we need to immediately, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, not even look at it because we know that there is no more revelations that God will be giving to anyone from uh, uh, through angels. Okay, we'll stop here because our time is up. Um, any questions anyone has? We were almost done to the end of the chapter. We finished most of the points. Anyone has any questions? Yeah, can I ask one question? Sure, Isaac. Yeah, why is it uh, most times in the scripture when the uh, angels appear to people, they always open up, say, fear not, fear not. Why? Thank you, Isaac. That's a good question because... Um, uh, many times, you know, uh, because uh, because of the reverence they have and in places where, uh, you know, sometimes it's the uh, uh, it's the angel of the Lord that appears. Um, and uh, we see that uh, in many instances, 
it's um, the second person of the Trinity himself appearing as, uh, uh, you know, uh, where we read that clearly there are instances of the angel of the Lord or the angel of God appearing as God himself, uh, which is perhaps more specifically as God the Son taking on human body for a short time in order to appear to human beings. So, uh, you know, they have this fear that they have seen God himself. Uh, or uh, they have this fear that they are seeing, uh, uh, you know, an angelic uh, being or a heavenly host. Uh, most of the times they have this fear that they are seeing God themse uh, God himself. And hence this whole reverence and fear that, you know, they will, they will die uh, or they will be struck down dead. Uh, and hence they fall down in uh, a reverence uh, before the angel which could also be sometimes uh, the second person of the Trinity, the uh, uh, God, the Son, taking on a uh, human body uh, for a short period of time and appearing to human beings, which is where we read uh, the phrases, the angel of the Lord or the angel of God appearing as God himself. Yeah. Did that help, Isaac? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I'm sure you'll have other questions, but since we've run out of time, uh, we have uh, three minutes past time, you have your next class, so you can uh, think about questions you have on uh, angels and uh, we'll answer that on our class in Wednesday. Okay, thank you all for joining class today. Have a good day and a blessed weekend and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you.